And this park is right on the Mexican border. You can see the wall right up there. We are here in San Diego. And it is the last big city stop before we get to Mexico. So we've got a lot to see and do. So when you're on big road trips, stuff often breaks. Usually it's the trailer, but this time it was the truck. Our power seat goes down, but it no longer comes up. I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of stuck in a very reclined position, which is super annoying. So after doing some research, I think that it is this switch module here. This was pretty hard to get to. So I got the switch module out now. Big thanks to 1A Auto for their video on how to do that. Never would have gotten it out without that. <laughs> Got the switch housing open now, and there doesn't seem to be anything like physically obviously wrong with the switch. So somehow just messing around with the switch. <gasps> Yay! Happy dance! <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we didn't have to buy a new one. We just had to open everything up and mess around with it. Jiggle. That's, this is the equivalent to jiggle the handle. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right, well, that's a win. All right, let's show you where we're staying. I've got the map. Let's give you a tour. We're staying here at the Tijuana River Valley Regional Campground, and they have a few different camping options. We are on one of the regular sites that costs $24 a night. None of the sites here, we should mention, have any hookups whatsoever, so be prepared for some dry camping. Or if you don't have a rig at all, you can stay in one of their yurts, which is kind of cool. They have a couple different sizes, prices there range about $60 to $90 a night and they sleep anywhere from groups of six to groups of 10. They do have showers on site, garbage disposal, things like that. However, they don't have a dumping station, so make sure you fill before you get here and uh, be prepared to dump your tanks elsewhere. All right, let's show you now what the sites look like. We are here on site number three, and it's pretty close to the entrance. Pretty easy back end site, just fits our rig plus our truck. Everything here looks pretty new. Got this massive fire pit that's like insulated, probably because it's so dry here. A nice new picnic bench. And yeah, that's pretty much it. They have 46 different sites here, 16 of which are tent only sites. And then they have an additional five horse sites. And the horse sites are really cool. They have two enclosure things uh, for your horse. And the nice thing if you are staying here with the equine sites is there are 25 miles of trail in this park um, for you to enjoy. So have at her, giddy up. Okay, so some of the sites, mostly at the one end of the first row are a little bit backwards. So if you back your trailer into this site, your door is gonna be over here and your picnic table and fire pit and the whole rest of your site is on the opposite side. Now, if you have an RV and you can pull straight in, great, that works just fine for you. However, if you have a trailer, you may want to avoid sites number seven, eight, nine, 10, and 12. They also have horseshoe pits, two of them. And then they have a bocce ball court. So bring your balls. <laughs> they also have Cornhole. Sounds like such a dirty name. I don't like the name of this game. <laughs> cornhole. We call it beanbag toss in Canada. And this park is right on the Mexican border. You can see the wall right up there. All right, here's one of the showers. They seem to be a good size and they seem pretty clean. They are pay. One token gets you four minutes and one token is 25 cents. They also seem to have some kind of playground slash obstacle course and Mel is very interested in this so we're gonna check it out. On your marks, get set, go! I don't really 
really know what to do with this one. So they've got a climbing wall, but uh, I think I might be just a little bit too tall for it. All right, I guess I'll try this little mini wall. I feel like there's harder ones on the other side. Yeah. So you could sit up there? Yep. Oh, there's no... Yeah. Okay. Ooh, it's actually kind of high. <laughs> Hello up there. You made it. Now how do you get back down? I think I'm going to go back down this side. I can't see where I'm going anymore. Oh, that's the tough part of coming down. Yeah. Yeah, not quite the right footwear. There we go. Mountain conquered. Yeah, so this has been a great campground to be based at just outside of San Diego. And it's been nice and quiet at night. It's clean, everything's nice and new. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend it. Yeah, it's nice and dark for sleeping, which has been really good too. Mm -hmm. Love it. And yeah, there's just, there's so many birds here. It's really nice. We've been enjoying it to the point where we originally planned for just three nights here and we extended by two extra nights. Benny's gonna get a treat. Are you ready? You gotta sit. Can you shake? No, no not up. Sit. Shake. Good boy. Good boy. He's like, okay, give me the goods, lady. That's one way to get extra moisture. One final update on the seat situation. So it turned out we celebrated a bit prematurely. <laughs> Didn't quite work. It was still kind of finicky, so did have to go to our local AutoZone and get a replacement switch. But now we're all good. Goes up, goes down, all fixed. All right, we are starting off the day at the San Diego Zoo. Now this is really exciting for me because I grew up watching Jack Hanna's Animal Adventures and him taking animals to various talk shows and my mom would record it for me. And they always talked about the San Diego Zoo. And so I'm finally getting to come here. It's always been a childhood dream. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. So let's go check it out. And we've seen it all. Wow. We saw absolutely everything. So just a warning for you, you are about to see a lot of animals.
wow, we've been here since 9 a.m. and it is now 5 p.m. So if you come here, be prepared to leave a full day to see the entire zoo. They say on the websites that you could do it in maybe four hours, but you'd be rushing it, yeah, like no really way. rushing it. So what should you know coming to the San Diego Zoo? Sunscreen mm. and a hat. Definitely a hat, sunglasses, sunscreen, protect your skin. Other than that, hydration, water. Um, we brought our reusable water bottles. We refilled them at the water fountains like three or four times throughout the day. So that was really good. Oh, that's a tip actually. Some of the animals like the hippos and the koalas, they're actually nocturnal. And so it's better to see them at the end of the day when the sun is starting to go down because that's when they actually come out and start moving around a lot more. All right, we've got a little bit of a disaster here. A whole bunch of tiny little sugar ants got in possibly on the Starlink cord. They got in on that cable that I told you to never leave on the ground. And they really seem to like Benny's food. So we're gonna have to evict the ants from the trailer. They're everywhere. So they are coming up on our Starlink cable. This is Mel's worst fear. Wow. So many friggin' ants. Okay, situation relatively under control. <laughs> Mel was sweeping up a storm and uh, I went to the local 7-Eleven, got a little bit of ant spray. Now we will have to be careful with that raid. We're gonna have to clean it up really well in a little bit because it is toxic and we got Benny around. Yeah, and in terms of the Starlink cable, uh, I'm gonna have to really seal that up well the next time I put it out. So that'll yeah. be a job for tomorrow. I knew ants in the trailer is one of those things that I've seen a lot of people talk about and we've been so fortunate in like two and a half years to not actually experience that. But I knew one day it would happen, and it happened today. <laughs> Can check that off the checklist. Oi. Well, good morning. Today is a very special day because it's Black Friday. Now, I've done some Black Friday shopping in the States a couple of times. However, Jay here has never gone Black Friday shopping before. I'm not really looking forward to it. So we've been shopping for a couple hours now without a whole lot of success. But the big item that we were looking for today was wetsuits because let's just say the Pacific Ocean is a little cold in the winter and so is the Sea of Cortez. We were very successful at the Rip Curl outlet. Jay got a shorty, I got a long one, and then Jay also got a, like a sun shirt. Kind of like a rash guard. A rash guard, thank you. <laughs> And all of that only came to like just over $200. And if you're not familiar with wetsuit pricing, normally one of these, just one, starts at like $200. The saga of the ants continues. Yeah, we got some no residue tape. So we're going to try and get that line up off the ground and make sure that the entrance way under the slide is completely sealed. <laughs> but now we need to get a boogie board or possibly two. The shopping continues. So we were not able to find a suitable boogie board, but we did find a nice beach. Got some uh, pretty impressive looking kites up there. Unfortunately though, I just saw a sign. This, this particular beach at Imperial Beach is also where the T Tijuana River dumps in. And there's a sign over here that said that the water here might not be ideal for swimming, that there may be sewage. Yeah. Should we check out that pier? Yeah, let's walk over to that. And look at this, right on the beach, we found this little store. And I got a little boogie board. Good price too. What are you getting? I don't know yet. I'm torn between espresso explosion, salted caramel, pistachio, or chocolate peanut butter. Mmm, yum. How is it? Oh, that's good. Got ice cream, we got bright sun, walking on a nice pier, and I got a boogie board. Wow, 
Well, today was a bit of a marathon shopping day, but really it's only three, three o'clock. And I mean, I could still keep going, but Mel is tired of shopping. So <laughs> I think we're gonna wrap it. All right, you might remember last year we used the Amazon drop boxes a bit. And if you didn't know that, well, go check out those videos. Anyways, we are back at another Amazon drop box. We've received a few things. So let's have a look. Oh. It's like Christmas. It is like Christmas. What is that? That's to cover the Starlink cable. Oh, some plugs to protect our Starlink cable. Very clever. We have a water pump in here for the trailer. This is a backup option for us. Yeah, so I really debated about getting the water pump or not. We actually carry around a bunch of spare parts and I consider it insurance, basically. Murphy's Law says if you don't have a spare water pump and you go to Mexico, your water pump's gonna break. But if you're carrying an extra one, your current one's gonna be fine. So it's basically just a little extra insurance. And I'm really excited. I got a Mexican cookbook, which means that each week when we're in Mexico, we're gonna be making something from this cookbook and share it with you. And hopefully you'll like it too. They're everyday recipes, so they're supposed to be easy, which is what I like. So it's time to fix up that little ant problem that we had. So, new protocol for Starlink. The cables are no longer touching the ground. Probably a smart idea. So it comes across here, doesn't touch the ground, goes in under here, and I'm gonna use some of this no residue tape that we got today. All right, that seems to be sealed up nicely now. We'll see how it goes, fingers crossed. Thanks so much for joining us here in San Diego. We absolutely loved it. Yeah, the zoo is so cool. And next week we will be coming to you while we cross the border actually into Mexico, which is so exciting. It will be, well, hopefully, smooth sailing. <laughs> but anyways, that will also mark the beginning of our Baja series, which means that the overlay on our video thumbnails will be changing. And thank you to everyone who took the time to vote. Um, we had a great uh, turnout for that. And um, the one that won is the one with us and Benny. And that's it. So thanks again. We'll see you next week. See you then chicken in ho chicken in Oaxacan yellow mole with green beans and chayote or potatoes this switch module was made in canada I tell ya not very good quality and further on <laughs> are you gonna go all the way up well no no why not Make sure you don't miss the next video by liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in the next one.